This video is sponsored by the JVOS Mindset. It's a new way of thinking of jujitsu. Click the link in the description and get your copy today. Welcome to the Master Plan Lecture Series. My name is Javier Vasquez and today we have a special JVOS lecture. This time we are discussing the efficiency of the mind. So this is something that has really been impactful in my jiu-jitsu over the past seven or eight years and especially as I've gotten older so I hope you like this presentation and I hope you have an open mind in order to to accept the knowledge that I'm trying to present to you and I and I hope you see the value the real value in what I'm saying here so let's go ahead and get started with the efficiency of the mind so your state of mind can have a huge impact on your physical conditioning and recovery the mind controls everything. So if you are able to have a clear mind and a present mind, you will always be more efficient. Not allowing stress, not allowing anxiety to creep into your mind conserves energy, whether you know it or not, whether you want to believe it or not. I would consider this to be your mental conditioning. Your attitude and mindset from any positional perspective affects your conditioning. That is for real. So I'm going to pull up a quick chart here and the line across the bottom talks about opponent fatigue and this is fatiguing over time essentially. Then we have a second line which talks about efficiency. Now there are different ways, there are several different ways to achieve a goal. More often than not these ways, although there are techniques involved in most jiu-jitsu schools, these ways require brute force. And I think that most people will agree with brute force being um, the primary way, especially for beginners, that people tend to try and do things. This is the only thing that they can see in their mind, the only way that they can, that they can see things working in their mind. And I believe that most jiu-jitsu schools are able to fatigue an opponent based on the on the pace, based on the brute force, based on the aggressiveness that they implore, but they're not very efficient. The decisions that they make are not efficient decisions. Most jiu-jitsu schools um, have an overwhelming kind of philosophy on how to apply techniques. Not all, but most. I don't know how how much efficiency is is is, is a desired result of, of what most jiu-jitsu schools are teaching, but that just happens to be the fact. I, I grew up at a school, I, I learned from a school and, and, and it was very much, you know, conditioning, work hard, lots of drills, things of that nature. Now what I've tried to do at my academy here, and the way I think and the way I teach jiu-jitsu and technique as a whole, uh, through this JVOS mindset that I'm always talking about is to fatigue the opponent a lot. I want to become an energy vampire, sucking the opponent's energy at every turn while maintaining a high level of efficiency. So this is kind of the jujitsu that I preach, not just for competition, but for also longevity. I, I believe that jujitsu longevity is very important. If you are very aggressive, and very assertive and very forceful over time that has a huge wear and tear on your body so if you can do things and be more efficient it preserves your body and you're able to train longer with fewer injuries and i think that as you start getting a little bit older this is an incredibly invaluable way of training and way of thinking so let's let's discuss some states of mind here we have, of course, the present mind, represented by yellow, which is low energy. The distracted mind, um, again, low energy. Sometimes you can distract an opponent with a feint or something. So it's, 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 it can be low energy. We have the reactive mind, which is kind of like medium energy. People start reacting to everything you're doing. And, of course, we have the panic mind, and I call this the fight or flight mindset, which is you, don't, you, you, gotta, you feel like an urgency to be to move to escape um you know you could be starting to become claustrophobic and then all of a sudden it, your decisions kind of go out the window it's more important just to get out of whatever you're in and uh, i call this the fight or flight mindset again let's pull up another chart here so let's talk about states of mind over time and then we're going to have an energy chart and i will also have color representation which kind of helps you guys visualize the energy chart as well 
So a present or a distracted mind has a low energy, uh, which is represented here by, by the, uh, the yellow color. Now these little bumps that I'm, I've added at the end are based on control. So if you're rolling with somebody and they're trying to escape, but you are, a, but you're able to kind of control with what I call fundamental stability and they are moving. So you have a little bit of a rock, but you're able to stabilize and control. That is what's signified by these little bumps. You're kind of able to kind of ride the wave in the opponent's escape attempts or control attempts. And, and you're able to kind of stabilize with low energy. The reactive mind I represent in yellow. Now why, or uh, in orange, I'm sorry. Now why in orange? Because this is a higher level of energy expenditure than the present or distracted mind. And the little bumps that I've represented are these little spikes in energy. You're constantly being very reactive. And, and I like to visually represent that with these little, these little spikes in energy in a reactive mind. The last mind that I want to talk about is a panic mind, or you can call it a fight or flight mindset. This is represented in red, high energy expenditure. Now, the panic mind, I like to represent with these long spikes. Now, notice how the spike, that first spike is very high and it, it, it endures for a good amount of time. This is a high energy expenditure. Then you kind of relax and then you spike again, but you're never able to hold that second one as long or longer than the first one. The first one always kind of sets the, the pace of how long you can hold your energy explosion. And then from then on, it could be short spikes or slightly longer spikes, but you're never ever going to reach that, that high level of spike, which was the initial reaction um, in the panic, panic mind. So I like to use this visual representation for you to understand the increased energy level as well as the difference in, in the spike and the uh, a visual representation of what the energy looks like. So let's go into types of mindset here. We have a relaxed mind and a focused mind. In the relaxed mind, we have the playful mind. Shout out to Heat on Gracie for the playful mindset. We have the experimental mind where you're very loose and you're trying different things. In the focus mind, we have the open mind, which is where um, you're focusing on learning. The competition mind where it's always going to be slightly more intense than, than the open, than the playful mind, but not quite as high as the last mindset, which is the fight mind, which is fight or flight mindset. To me, a fight mind is you're going into a cage. There's going to be physical damage, potentially uh, harm to you. You have to have a higher level of awareness, higher, higher level of proficiency, higher level of mental uh, acuity, um, very focused, very dangerous. Your life is on the line. That is what I call the fight mind. Now, again, let's bring up another chart here. And I want to talk this time about comfort over time. And again, we have an energy, uh, an energy uh, part of the chart, which will slowly show you guys how the energy is increasing. Fighting from a place of presence and comfort is always going to be at a lower energy. There's no anxiety. There's no reactiveness. You are just simply present, comfort, and whatever problems or situations arise, you're able to very diligently, very patiently resolve each individual problem. Time moves normally. It is easy to make good decisions. And, and I really want to focus on um, how the energy expenditure and your mindset affects your decision making. Now we have intermittent discomfort. So what that means is you're comfortable most of the time and here and there you are um, uncomfortable. So or uh, you know, you're, you're, you're experiencing discomfort, but not all the time, but intermittent, intermittently. Again, this is a higher energy ex expenditure because um, now you become a little bit more reactive, essentially. Time slows down. Good decisions are more challenging. I'm not saying that you're going to make bad decisions all the time, but if this intermittent discomfort lasts over time, more often than not, with fatigue, frustration, um, and the opponent's persistence, good decisions uh, are more challenging and mistakes are more readily made than from a present or comfortable mindset. 
Intermittent comfort is the last mind, uh, state of mind that I want to discuss. And that, of course, is in the red. So think about it. If you're comfortable very little, you're always going to be expending more energy, more anxiety, more stress, more pressure. And in this case, it could be as bad as you're suffering every second and mistakes are inevitable. So if you think about it as you're constantly chasing, you're constantly dis uh, uh, in an uncomfortable situation, um, you go from position to position and you're going from uncomfortable to uncomfortable to worse and you come back, it's a little bit better, but you constantly feel like you're not finding what I call a mental buoy which is you finally get to the buoy, you're able to take a deep breath, you're able to take a regulation breath, you're able to reset your mind. Um, this is not possible in this state of intermittent comfort. You can do it in intermittent discomfort, and of course, you are already there in a present and comfort comfortable state of mind. So I want you guys to understand that your ability to regulate this mindset or these mindsets and always bring yourself next to present is incredibly important. I discussed this in JVOS Mind Work, which is the last group. I discuss regulation and re-regulating and bringing yourself back to the present mind. So these concepts might be foreign to some of you. These are things that I have been discovering and developing over the past several years. They have been coming to me and, um, ex and I've been working with these experiences and I will tell you that this idea, these concepts, this awareness that I'm trying to bring to all of my jujitsu brothers and sisters has changed my jujitsu forever. I hope you enjoyed this content. Like and subscribe if you haven't done so. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions and I look forward to seeing you guys again real soon.